As we get older, there's probably nothing that we value more than maintaining our memory and our mind. Because after all, our mind is who we are. It turns out that recent research, just a few years old, has called dementia diabetes of the brain. Yes, sugar metabolism is key to our brain health because our brain uses sugar primarily as its main fuel However, if we eat too much sugar, we take too many refined carbohydrates in our body, in our daily diet, that is not good for our brain. In fact, it can make the brain resistant to insulin, which brings glucose into the brain tissue to nourish it and give it fuel. So it turns out we have to do eat a diet that's much lower in sugar and carbohydrate than we're used to as Americans. Now, if you're already following a really wholesome diet and eating whole grains, eating lots of quinoa and having vegetables and fresh fruit, don't worry as long as you're not overdoing it on refined sugar and refined carbs, you don't have to cut all those good, healthy, uh, natural sources of carbohydrate out of your diet, but do it in balance. And it turns out that in people 70 years and older, according to a study that was published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, in people 70 years and older, they had a three and a half times increased risk of starting to lose their memory if they had this high sugar diet. However, those who had a high fat diet, and this would be healthy fats, had a 42% reduction in the risk of losing their memory. The natural system of healthcare from India called Ayurveda has preached for thousands of years the benefits of what it would say is an unctuous diet, meaning a diet rich in healthy fats. Now, fats have been anathema, they've been forbidden in the health food um, recommendations that we've gotten for dozens of years. Of course, they are making a comeback. And this is just an, another example of how that ancient wisdom actually was understanding the brain and the body better than we have with all our modern science. But fortunately today, eating a diet rich in healthy fats from nuts, from avocado, from healthy organic olive oil, these sources of fats help to protect our brain, which is 60% fat. Now, I wanted to mention heavy metals as well. Aluminum and lead, for example, have both been associated with loss of cognitive ability. Uh, lastly, I wanted to mention some healing herb from the Ayurvedic tradition. It's called Gotu Kola, or also known as Centella Asiatica. It's also called Indian Pennywort, and it's also referred to as Brahmi, although that can be Bacopa Manieri, another related really great herb for the brain. Go to cola in animal studies has been shown to offset every known uh, mechanism that I've mentioned here for creating dementia. For example, it reduces the toxicity of aluminum, it reduces free radicals, it reduces this abnormal protein called beta amyloid that's associated with Alzheimer's. It also has been shown to increase learning and increase memory in animals. So go to cola is a great herb to have as part of your daily routine. You could make it as a tea, put a few leaves in some hot water and just drink that throughout the day. You'll probably find as many of my patients do and I enjoy myself that it gives a natural alertness without giving that jitteriness of caffeine. Secondly, you might want to take advantage of the wisdom of Ayurveda, which says the synergistic effect of several herbs working together is greater than any of the herbs in isolation. And there's a formula called Youthful Mind, whose main ingredient is Gotu Kola, but it also has another herb called Shankapushpi, which is said to be the best herb for the mind in Ayurveda, and also Tinospora cordifolia, which is a fantastic herb that helps the body naturally detoxify. And lastly, don't forget sleep. In sleep, it's been recently discovered, our brain cleans itself 
it actually flushes out toxins. So we want to keep our brain healthy, so be sure to get enough good sleep. <music>